What they teach you at drama school apparently is never work with children and never work with animals. But do you work with agents, I wonder? It's been a torrid few weeks for South Africa's President Jacob Zuma and for several generations actors. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. And joining me tonight to provide their take on the newsreels is Chester Missing, Dr. Chester Missing, and Mzotol Mpolasi, the senior political analyst at Political Analysis South Africa. Mzotol, what have we done to ourselves? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Oh, but nonetheless, it should be an interesting uh, discussion. Do we, do we stick on formalities? Do you have any formal titles that I need to refer you? You're not professor or doctor or the learned or anything like that? Well, uh, I could claim it, but unfortunately, it's still Mr. for now. Okay, no, because if you claim it, apparently it's wrong. Uh, but Dr. Missing, um, yes. it's, it's nice, to, nice to have you with us. Do you it's want us to, can we be a little less formal or yes. do you want to be called Dr. Missing? No, you can call me sir, you can call me uncle, you can call me Chester. Your call. Um, th thank you, thank you, Dr. Chester, Sir Missing. Um, yes. It's nice, nice to have you both here. It's really good to have you here. Uh, President Jacob Zuma, Dr. Missing, um, is gone missing. Oh, yes, no, he's gone, uh, he's gone for a break to, to Russia. He's gone to take a, a holiday, go on a break in Russia, which is a lot like going surfing in Kokstad. I don't know why you... <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do, you know, because, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough go into short-term exile. Uh, yeah, but the, lots of people went, but it wasn't holiday. They, they didn't call it holiday 30 years ago. They went to Russia and it was to military camps and stuff. Yes, it was tough. Amandla, Amandla. Yes, we all understand now. But uh, now he's gone there because the only other guy who can push away the media as aggressively as he can is Vladimir Putin. So <laughs> it's a matter of time before Tuli Madoncela is sent to a, a you know, their our equivalent of Siberia. I don't know what that would be, Velkom. <laughs> so is he going to go prepare the way, I wonder, for Tuli? Well, I don't know. I mean, every, the president, everyone wants my EFF wants money from him. Tuli Madoncela wants money from him. I'm pretty sure uh, the Guptas are dodging calls. I mean, because <laughs> they are now my favorite Lesotho diplomats uh, now that they... Uh, well, I'm excited about that, I must say. Because uh, Lesotho is by far the biggest piece of foreign-owned land in South Africa. No, absolutely right. At least they've got, uh, the Guptas have got, uh, got nice Lesotho passports. Uh, yes. um, so, Kolo, I mean, Chester is making light of some very serious serious matters, of course. Uh, Parliament recently, we saw Julius Malema leaning and chanting very convincingly that uh, the president must pay back the money. He's so in such a hurry to not pay back the money that he's gone off to Russia. What do you make of it? Because nobody seems to know why he's gone there. It's not like um, the good hospitals there. Robert Mugabe goes to uh, China to go to hospital, doesn't he? Well, there's a lot of speculation to say he's mm. going for his health. But, of course, Russia and South Africa enjoy quite warm relations, and, of course, state visits will happen at any time. But Vladimir Putin is busy talking to the president of the Ukraine. He's got real problems. Why does he want to deal with us? Well, basically, the agenda continues, regardless of whatever uh, upheaval there may be in the region. And, of course, we do know that Putin has been isolated from the West right now. So, of course, this could be a sense of him reaching out to his fellow BRICS partner. Mm. And, of course, for Jacob Zuma, just part of his itinerary for the year in terms of state visits. Yeah, of course it is. Okay. Uh, Chester, what do you make of it? What's well, I mean, doing I, there? I don't, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it, it is a crazy times. I mean, crazy. How does the SABC fire actors who have matrix but keep a COO who does not? I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't under, Mzutolo, I don't understand. And the, the thing with Jacob Zuma is he's having a hard time. I mean, Julius literally is nailing him to, you know, he really is nailing him. And, and, and that does put us in a weird situation. I mean, it's left some white people very conflicted over who to hate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but is it a change? Is it a change, Zimzor, in terms of the political landscape? Is Julius Malema now the official leader of the unofficial opposition? Well, certainly, if you look at the discourse, uh, the media coverage and the cycle right now, it seems to be all EFF. And, of course, the EFF has already said that they are the uh, unofficial opposition mm -hmm. in some way. So it seems that, really, they're challenging something that many South Africans, you know, uh, this is part of uh, this uh, confusion that some of these individuals at Chester's making mention yeah. of uh, are facing right now in that parliament for the longest time has perhaps not been very responsive and of course Julius Malema and his party are calling that out. It was easy for the longest time to hide behind parliamentary protocol, to hide behind the Speaker's office in not addressing some of the issues that the political parties, opposition parties, that is, have been raising. And certainly, by extension, the, uh, the constituency has been raising, but of course, hiding behind this uh, structure of parliament and this prestige of parliament. Uh, just, uh, I mean, Balak Gambete, what's, what's her pluck? What's she? Oh, <laughs> 
She says, she says the president did respond. If Balek and Betis, Balek and Betis uh, puppet credentials are truly world class. I mean, I mean, how does the president, how does the president, they, the, Jacob Zuma seems to do this a lot. Now he's getting the Minister of Police to decide what to do about Nkandla. A guy he employed is going to, I mean, the, Takalani Sesame is going to be suing our president for copyright. And, and the problem is, and the problem is that, you know, as, as Mzokola was saying, is that, um, you know, the DA has been, you know, the, the opposition noises we're hearing are purely EFF. DA, the only way they're going to get any attention is if Helen Zilla sends Musi Maimani to Parliament in blue overalls. But that would be very apartheidish. <laughs> and he'd go by his own accord. He'd make his own choices. Of course, he's yes, his own. Yes, of course he does. He's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah, no, Chester, 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 stick with us, stick with us, stick with us. I mean, please, behave yourself. Sorry, yeah. This is not Parliament. Yes. This is not Parliament. <laughs> Gags for days. All right. Now, now here, here we go. So we've got Balek Ambete who calls in the cops, and the cops come into Parliament, and the EFF refuses to move, and it causes chaos. Um, is Parliament ever going to be the same again? Uh, you're talking to me. Well, yes, sir, I mean, well, I, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think it's healthy. I mean, I think it's healthy. We got to. I mean, Belek and Beto herself. I've always questioned because I mean, she had shares in Khao Train and in Goldfields. I mean, yeah. she's like one of those vegetarians who also eats chicken. But the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, Parliament. I mean, Parliament needs to be needs to be shaken up a little bit. If if the ANC is going to hide behind protocol to avoid actually dealing, I mean, the ANC should. You know what they should do is get an EFF to start a committee which is full of EFF. Com- Commission uh, uh, members to adjudicate the EFF's behaviour exactly the way Jacob Zuma handles things. Yeah, that's a very good idea. I like it. Um, so uh, Chester knows all about showbiz, of course, and showbiz uh, is very much centre stage at the moment. And so much of about Ngandla is about showbiz, and so much of what the EFF is doing is about show business in Parliament. How much of it is noise, and how much of it is real? Because also recently we've finally got the spy tapes that are going to be released, and the DA is working through protocol and process and all of that sort of stuff. Is the DA doing the real work? in terms of opposition politics and the EFF is simply uh, the cream and chocolate sprinkles on the top? Well, I think uh, it's a dual approach. Uh, one is much more brazen and the other one sticks to sort of... But together uh, it's very effective. Yeah, it's very effective together because the, the hard yards in terms of asking the questions, getting the information from government where the government is not forthcoming with certain pieces of information, this is what the DA has been doing. Uh, they've asked a record number of questions or parliamentary questions of, since this new term started. And of course, they've been pursuing something that they pride themselves with, the sort of spy tapes issue, and of course, any legal issue that has come up. So it seems that at some level the EFF is prioritizing the politicking around it, getting that political mileage from making the noise, but of course the DA succeeding in the procedural aspect and that together is, uh, is a very potent mix. But of course these are two different parties. They're two different course. parties, they, but they, they're heading towards a similar objective. They're taking very different routes. How dangerous is the game that is being played? Well, very dangerous uh, in that, yes, it's a high stakes game in that if you, you know, win it, you win it very well and it's quite effective for the EFF right now. But of course, in the long term, if this does not translate into some uh, formidable political strategy, thinking 2016, thinking 2019, uh, it will easily get out of hand because we do know if you play outside the rules, what game are you playing mm. then? And, and if you change the rules, then the rules are changed forever. You can't go back to the old rules if you win big. Certainly. And of course, uh, it's not only just about the noise. Uh, you know, to be fair to the EFF as well, for instance, if you look at the medical aid uh, that members can now take in Parliament, uh, before it was compulsory for members to take a sort of government-sanctioned medical aid, government-sanctioned pension regime, but right now all of that is actually being revised. And it's if, mainly because if, if the members, EFF members, Chester, if, if members could go work on the cast of generations, because there's no medical aid there either. No, well, I mean, that's a perfect job for them, because you've got to perform, you've got to eat, and you've got to get a pay of 100,000 a month. I mean, that's what's confusing me. That's what's confusing me uh, is, is seeing Floyd Shivambu arriving at the EFF rally launch in a, you know, in a, in a Porsche. I mean, really? That's like catching a nun in a G-string. That's, that, that's, that's Bladen Zimander tactics. I'm not, really, I'm not really sure you can be communist while you're in a Porsche. I don't know how that would work. But at the same time, the uh, DA's uh, pushing is, it, it does play to their minority that they work with. As I say, the DA is committed to change like Julius Malema is committed to way less. Because yeah. <laughs> he's not nationalizing gold mines, he's eating them. No, exactly. And, and uh, just have you been, ever been offered a, a role on Generations? Because you would like the pay increase. Thank I'm you. Sure. No, I've been trying to get, I've been trying to get one, uh, but Cloudy keeps blocking me because I ask awkward questions. But I mean, I don't know, Generations actors, I don't know what talent you need to be a Generations actors. 
maybe just slightly more than you need to be a journalist. I know, boom, hey, hey, boom, hey, hey, boom, hey, hey, in your face. But no, I mean the generation thing fair. is yes, play fair. Bo- bo- play nice. This <laughs> isn't fun. This is not fun. You have a political analyst and a puppet on the same show, and you're saying play fair. But the thing is, the I thi- will, I will do it to you about what Obisa does to you. Amandla, Amandla. Yeah. He's yeah, gonna, he's, he's gonna smack me in my. I've already got a guy's hand in my. Never mind. Yes, I know, I know. But you know what that's like. No, I don't actually. You work for Prime Media. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Uh, ba- back to reality, um, so, um, because the, this reality is a little bit too scary for my for, for my gentle taste. Um, how does this play out? Zuma comes back from Russia. Next time he goes back into Parliament, Julius Malema will sit there again and go, well, show me the money. What is it? Pay us the money. Just you do it. You'll do it better than me. No, I don't know. I, I can't do Julius's talk, but he is going pay us the money, which is slightly ironic because he also had to pay money to SARS. So no, if he hadn't had the agreement, my latex head would have exploded in the hypocrisy vortex. Yeah, but could you imagine? Why did Jacob Zuma not simply say that I won't answer questions from a guy who wants, who says I must pay back money when he's got SARS and he's back to pay back money. Once you pay back the money, we can talk about me paying back the money, but I'm not paying back the money to no, you. No, exactly, back the money. because the, this is the problem in South Africa right now. EFF wants DA voters to give back the land. The Tuli wants the, uh, Zuma to give back the money, and uh, Zuma wants to run to Russia. So nobody really, really knows what the, I mean, where do you start? I don't know start. Pick it up. Go. <laughs> Bang. Take it. Take it. Well, Tidy it up. Well, you basically start like this. Um, right now, there will be a move by the Speaker's office and searching the executive. You would have seen that, that they're trying to enforce rules in Parliament. Of course, it's not. But they didn't break any rules, did they? Well, in the main, in, in the manner of how Parliament is conducted, it seems that some of their behaviour was unparliamentary. They would argue breaking the spirit, but not the rules. Not the rules, yeah. but of course, uh, the spirit. Some people would argue are consistent with the rules, okay. and of course, it's you should have decorum in Parliament. And really, it seems as if Balek Mbeta's office is going to try to enforce that in some way. Mm, but I mean, they, they've called in the cops to enforce. Now they're calling Balek Mbeta to enforce. And once you can no longer enforce, the spy tapes are going to be crucial in this, of course. Sir. Um, yeah. and, and the spy tapes. If it is found that there was no political conspiracy against Jacob Zuma, this is game on. Yeah, of course, this will bolster his game, effectively. But uh, in the main, we go back to Parliament, and the issue right there in Parliament is that there's no order per se, and also that fundamental misunderstanding of what the Speaker's office should be yeah. doing. And Balek Mbeta coming back for a second term seems really intent on protecting the institution and protecting the individuals mm. rather than being a sort of presiding mm. officer that is seen to be fair by all political If parties. we're going to have a puppet, I think we should have Chester Missing as Speaker of Parliament. Amandla, Would you take the job? Amandla, because right now, right now, Balek Mbeta doesn't look like she's a puppet. She looks like she's auditioning to be in the TV show Cheetahs. No, <laughs> she wants to be on Generations. I think that's where it is. <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody wants to be on generations but the, the, <laughs> the, the, the thing is the thing is that, that, that how do we decide who has the moral high ground because everybody's slipping downhill including uh, you know the democratic alliance struggles to look at its own historic point of view which is what gives credibility to the EFC's position DA is trying to rename part of the N1 in Cape Town after the party president FW de Klerk Boulevard I mean that makes sense because a lot of black people have been killed on it yeah I'll tell you what Chester on that heavy note Chester Missing Dr. Chester Missing sorry your honor um, and the senior political analyst, Mzo Tolum Polase, political analyst at Political Analyst South Africa. He's never going to be the same again. Thank you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow, if Chester doesn't take it all over. Good night. Shh. And goodbye. Sorry. sorry, sorry.